I welcome you to today's newspaper analysis sessions. For people who are joining me for the first time, this is an about me section of sorts. This has information about how long I have been in the cycle, what I have done before coming in the cycle, how long I have been in the cycle, and the fact that I've got an interview call for CSE, IFOS, and HCS this year. For people who are watching uh, you know, this uh, analysis for the first time, I would encourage you to go check out the top uh, right uh, hand section in which I would give the link for the first introductory session of uh, current affairs analysis, wherein I speak about my approach as to you know how I uh, intend to proceed further with newspaper analysis. I don't think you need elaborate you know hour long analysis uh, that you usually see in YouTube at large. You just need to stick to uh, pieces of information in newspaper that can give you a better shot of either uh, eliminating an option in prelims or give you some sort of a fodder point in mains. And we're going to see how. Let's come to the Indian Express first. No news on the first couple of pages. Then I think this can be an important news only for people who are preparing for Forest Services interview. For those people, I would encourage you to read this. Otherwise, not much exam relevance anyway. Then we come to for people who are preparing for UPSC interview should definitely you know read on why we need a new parliament building in the first place. Uh, that information is not available in this column, but this should be an impetus enough to just go and Google about it exclusively for people who are preparing for the interviews, not for people who are planning to appear in 2023 mains or you know before that in prelims. Then moving forward, editorial is good. So the first piece of information that we get is about the draft amendments to the IT rules and the fact that you know PIB is now being given the power to order the removal of posts if it deems them to be fake. So that can be used in GS2, you know, media and freedom of speech and expression. The two themes which can gain from this information. And then there are certain issues that you could possibly think of, you know, that are being spoken about in the article, wherein the writer says that PIB is a government agency. So how can government decide to uh, censor or how can government decide what is fake or what is not? And removal stands in violation with the freedom of speech and expression. That is all you need to know as far as the first editorial is concerned. Then we come to this article by the uh, by the former, uh, who the current CEO of uh, Niti Ayo. And a lot of pieces of information that you can use in a lot of places. This is full of fodder code points. And we'd see how you can actually use these points in main exam. So for one, the writer speaks about uh, the, uh, the launch of this new aspirational blocks program, similar to, you know, similar in line with um, aspirational district program. And it focuses on improving the governance. So in GS2 governance, you can add this detail up that there's a new scheme, uh, which, which is about aspirational blocks program. It is in line with the flagship aspirational district program, which was launched, launched in 2018. And it was focused on developing 112 underdeveloped districts of the nation. 500 blocks across 28 states are being targeted. And this scheme will focus on monitoring 15 key socioeconomic indicators. So as far as governance is concerned, we'll see the interlinkages, which can also be uh, memorized using GS-based framework. For instance, there's an O interlinkage with health and nutrition, which is again a topic in GS2. Governance has a linkage with education. Then governance has a linkage with agriculture and water resources. Governance has a linkage with financial inclusion and skill development. Governance has interlinked with GS3 topic, basic infra, then social development from GS2. So as you could see, all of these pointers, you don't need to mem memorize. All you need to do is develop that interlinkage. How do you develop that interlinkage? You keep the syllabus in front of you and you try to memorize its pointers. And once you memorize it, you can interlink one part of the syllabus in another. For instance, this article is primarily given in context of governance. Governance, how is this related to agriculture? How is it related to you know, health and nutrition. 
how is it related to education once you brainstorm over it you can use those points across the spectrum uh, then uh, speaks about how uh, you know this key focuses on a data driven governance another keyword whenever there's a question on uh, governance you can definitely add this point and say that you know we need evidence based policy making and evidence based policy making has its edifice in data driven governance then it speaks about how the aspirational district program sh has shown that if development is taken as a jan andolan so we need to make development a jan andolan so this is going to be my conclusion of sorts in questions on governance in questions on welfare wherein i'm going to speak about how it is not uh, should not be handed out as a matter of uh, you know amnesty by the government but it needs to have active participation of people at large and it should become a jan andolan of sorts jan andolan means there is an active participation of people then it speaks about there are some case studies you can use as examples about the success of aspirational district program and then you can write some examples for instance the pashchimi singhbhum district uh, which was which is in jharkhand and is left wing extremism affected it raised the registration of pregnant women then districts like gumla karoli namsai and dhalai have increased the percentage of institutional deliveries than percentage of so you can see you know how uh, these issues are related to the uh, overarching theme of governance then speaks about how you know children immunization has gone up then you know self help group deployment has increased so all these case studies can be used as examples make a note of these case studies under the subhead of governance in gs2 then uh, another point about the success of aspirational district programs wherein our honorable finance minister spoke about how 95% of these 112 aspirational districts have made significant progress and uh, but there are certain shortcomings that need to be overcome those shortcomings again can be memorized in terms of gsb syllabus so those shortcomings are difficult terrain for so from geography you can relate to the point of difficult terrain the lack of resources resources is a subhead in gs1 so you can relate as to why there is a governance deficit in absence of resources and historical injustice in gs1 there is a point of history you relate due to a, a historical injustice there is a governance deficit then social marginalization we need social development uh, it's a topic in gs1 so due to an absence of social development social marginalization takes place due to which governance deficit happens then community vulnerability so on so forth so those are pointers you don't need to memorize you just need to encrypt them in your mind you just need to internalize them in the mind using what using syllabus pointers then the writer speaks about how states are expected to guide support review and build capacity of relevant officers so we need capacity building if you write capacity building as is that is a different uh, you know gravitas if you say if you use this over time that has a different gravitas so how am i going to remember i'm going to say that uh, we study gs and studying gs increases our red blood cell count that is a mnemonic i make in the moment so how is it relevant guide support review and build capacity right so i have spoken about this at you know at great lengths as to how making mnemonics has helped me memorize you know seemingly difficult and uh, you know long lines like this so i have come to a point at this point in time wherein i can make a mnemonic ad hoc when i read this i realized that if i use all these uh, words together they're going to hit a different note you know when the examiner is going to read my answer so i memorize it as it is how do i memorize i say that the mnemonic is while reading gs my rbc you know is increased gs means uh, guide support rbc is review build capacity of relevant officers so instead of using capacity building i use the phrase gs rbc guide support review and build capacity very easy to memorize then finally another conclusion of sorts wherein you know we say that the beauty of uh, aspirational blocks program lies in the fact that a vixit block is the foundation of a vixit bharat and this forward looking program will leverage the 3 c's again i use these 3 c's in a lot of uh, we spoke about 3 d's in one of our previous discussions now we speak about 3 c's so this rhetoric helps a lot you can use this rhetoric in essay in ethics and in gs2 
you can use it in n number of places once you get the knack of how to use it. But that is step number two. Step number one is developing that content. What are, what is that three C we speak about? Three C is about convergence, collaboration, and competition. So it can be used in terms of federalism, in terms of international collaboration, in terms of uh, in so many different ways. We need to have environment centric governance. So you can use convergence, collaboration, and competition between environment, sustainability, and development. Right. So the context might change, but this rhetoric would stay the same. That is it from this article. Then we move forward. This article is about uh, subsidy. So subsidies uh, are have been in the news since the last year or so. And so in GS3 budget, we need to have a healthy fiscal uh, balance. And to, to maintain that fiscal balance, we need to ensure that we're not spending on uh, issues that don't give us a requisite returns in the longer run. And it is in that context that reading about subsidies uh, becomes important. So pointers, good pointers that are found in this article are fairly simple. One, the writer speaks about how we are spending nearly two. So, so in total, the writer says this is the key line. The writer says that we are anyways crossing a subsidy bill of nearly 5 lakh crore just in the agriculture and food and space. And we have not even added the subsidy bill of, you know, industry manufacturing until now. Uh, for instance, nearly our GDP is around what? 260 lakh crore. Our last budget was around what? Around 35, 38 lakh crore. So if you keep that figure in mind, a figure of 5 lakh crore is really big. And it still has not taken into account the subsidy bill from the other sector. So this becomes a good data point when you want to say that the government needs to uh, cull or needs to reduce its subsidy bill. Then this can be a good way forward, wherein the writer says that we need to repurpose these subsidies and rationalize them for better outcomes. So these subsidies should not be used as a ploy to improve one's electoral performance. So there, so that is the linkage of GS2. Uh, with subsidies. So electoral performance should be dealing. Then if it has to be dealing, we need to ensure that we rationalize subsidies and we focus on improving outcomes. That is it. And then you can make n number of interlinkages by yourself, even those that are not given in this article. But that skill will only come with time. Once you need to understand initially as to how those interlinkages are being formed in the first place. So this article is written by the ambassador of Italy to India. Wonderful article. Let's see the snippets of information that are relevant as far as, you know, studying for CSE is concerned. So, so there's a question, there can be a question on Indo-Pacific and these pointers can serve as good body points, which will show the relevance and importance of Indo-Pacific at large. So what are those pointers? Number one, uh, Indo-Pacific produces 60% of world GDP. Point number one. Then says that it contributes two thirds of the global growth by 2030. Then number three, at least 25% of the exported goods would pass through the region trade related. Number three, as far as you know, trade is concerned, uh, this is a good keyword. We need to focus on uh, developing resilient supply chains. So whenever you speak about, so this can be used not only in context of Indo-Pacific, but in any question that speaks about trade, whether that trade is with respect to you know international uh, on an international level or even on you know, local levels. A resilient supply chains are the need of the art, and that was seen during the COVID crisis. So this again has good enough number of fodder points. Then this is relevant for people who are studying for IFOS uh, interview. This again, uh, there's a topic GS three. Uh, you know, e-technology in the aid of farmers. So a digital crop survey is being, you know, mulled over. And what this intends is to have, you know, visual and advanced analytics, GIS, GPS technologies, and AI ML to provide near real-time inform uh, information about the crop zone. So lead to real-time data and real-time data will lead to real-time governance on the ground. So this is with respect to agri-governance comes under the subhead of you know, GS3, e-technology in the aid of farmers. So today's newspaper was full of quality, relevant information. 
as far as your know, preparation is concerned and that is why i have to kind of rush today in order to be able to you know finish uh, the entire gamut of information that is there in today's newspaper then not much relevance as far as the examination is concerned this is a good discussion for people who are uh, this discussion on the page number 16 uh, id exchange and uh, but this is important for people who are preparing for csc you know interview or even csc interview hcs interview or ifos interview for people who are studying for prelims and mains this has little to no relevance at all so you can skip this and that is it let's come to the hindu now so now we have to come to page number 6 the editorial page to start off with our you know discussion on the hindu so this can be used in context of gs1 urbanization and let us see the important piece of information so the first problem is the problem of uh the finances as far as you know urban governance is concerned wherein only 15% of its own finances are being uh being taken care of by the city governance itself for the rest it is uh dependent on the state and on the central government that is issue number 1 moreover ppp contributes only 3% so again we need to improve the contribution of public private partnership again public private partnership is a subhead under gs3 so let's say even if you were to not have read this point in the article you should always try and make this linkage from let's say when i'm speaking about urbanization i'll think of correlation of different syllabus heads in urbanization when i come to gs3 i'll say that one of the pointers in gs3 is ppp so what is the correlation of ppp with urbanization and i can possibly think of you know if ppp is less then uh, it'll have to get finances from elsewhere and it'll be a difficult proposition so that is another way you could come to the same point without having read it in the first place uh then there are some urban centric schemes that are running smart city mission amrut pradhan mantri awas yojana but again the issue is the contribution from these scheme uh, that is not enough to plug the gap between what is the need of the r and you know what is being delivered on the ground at this point in time so this is going to be one of the way forward we need a buoyant revenue base buoyant revenue base essentially means that you know when the gdp of an area goes up when the uh, growth in terms of financial uh, in terms of economy goes up the tax should uh, also go up by the same measure uh, but again you i i don't think you need to have read this in the first place to write it in the examination hall because again as you thought about ppp using the framework of gs in gs 3 again there's another uh, topic which speaks about budget budget has revenue budget has taxation and uh, so you can have you could have thought about Uh, you know improving a buoyant revenue base to improve the urbanization landscape in india by yourself without having read it anywhere and that is the art newspaper teaches you that art sometimes you will find that linkage written um, on the paper and then you can you know take that as a good first step to think of other possible linkages i think that is it as far as this article is concerned then we move forward we see if there is yes so there's this uh, topic on gig article on gig economy there is a question that came in 2021 spoke about gig economy and it has couple of good keywords and a good case study from china and says that you know gig workers are also called platform workers good keywords and we uh, they need to be now declared as unorganized workers why do we want them to be declared as an unorganized workers so that they get social security benefit that is the need since covid another good keyword since covid their role has increased they have gone from invisible to front line and uh, that is another good keyword you can use in context of gig economy and that is it finally they speak about how rights were provided to workers gig workers in china and that enrich the entire ecosystem india should look to work on similar lines that is it 
then what else it speaks about that's a good interlinkage as far as you know clean energy is concerned i uh, could not have thought of this interlinkage by myself if it were not to were not for this article so the article speaks about how our economy is at risk so usually we hear about positive connotations of you know clean energy transition we also saw this term in a, a couple of days ago one of the discussions but this article speaks about how our financial uh, markets and our you know financial players are at risk due to the transition to clean energy why is that so because uh, our financial sector has even of late invested heavily on uh, fossil fuel resources and if there were to be a transition really really soon then it would bring up questions uh, on the you know fact that you know whether those payments whether those loans could be paid back to the financial players or not so so those examples are given in the heading that 60% of the lending to the mining sector is for oil and gas extraction so if suddenly oil and gas use is curbed those sectors which took up the loan would not be able to pay them back lead to npas similarly one fifth 20% of manufacturing sector debt is for petroleum refining electricity production accounted for 5.2% but only 17.5% of this is to pure play renewables so a significant chunk of that loan is going to non renewable energy uh, sources and again we need to invest funds to ensure that we in a very sustainable manner move to uh, a green transition and for that we need so to fulfill our panchamrit pledges we need to have at least 1 trillion dollars to meet these commitments that is my take away so the first take away was one of the negative implications of directly moving to clean energy very soon because it will expose our financial sector to risks of npa and in order to sustainably transition we need to have at least 1 trillion dollars to meet our essentially to meet our panchamrit uh, commitments and i think that is it uh, we have been able to finish both the newspapers uh, uh, if you want to see more of my work uh, go check out the description box i would encourage you to go to the telegram group i'm running i'm recently of late uh, compiling and organizing the place really well if you go to my telegram channel this is what it look like and uh, this is an index which is work in progress you'll see details of all of my works of my uh, you know free initiatives paid initiatives uh, details about uh, the faqs that people have asked and have answered in the past so i'm certain this will add tremendous value to you if you uh, want to check out more of my work go to the playlists section and you'd find more of my videos uh, if you have any follow up queries if you want to connect with me either leave a comment in the comment section or leave a question on the study group on that note i just want to take your leave thanks a lot for joining me take care and i'll see you soon bye